Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, I've got a challenge where I need this gorgeous, beautiful pile of wood chips to come from our meadow here all the way up to the chicken church. And I gotta do it without destroying a bunch of ground. So come along, let's see what we can do. So last week, a tree trimming company that's doing some right-of-way work here, electric line right-of-way work, they came by and dropped off a small truckload of chips, and I'm hoping they're going to send me more. They promised they've sent me more. We'll see how that goes. But uh, they put them right down here in the meadow. Obviously, they can't go anywhere else on the property without getting hung up. I actually had a little bit of an issue here. But I need to get this wood these wood chips up to the chicken church. That's where we need them the most right now because their composting system is working so well that they are moving compost quicker than I can put the chips down. So this big pile of chips is going to allow me to get ahead of them. So the dilemma I have is this time of year, obviously, it's really, really soft. The ground is soft. So getting the chips from here up to the house would not be a problem because we've got the driveway. But it's the next bench behind where the chicken church is. So I've got a road that goes right up behind my truck, you can see there. And with all the rain we've been having, that's pretty soft. And I don't want to tear that up too badly because I've got it on grade. I've got it draining well. The other option would be to go all the way around behind the workshop and come up a back road that's more stone and be able to come in that way. But that obviously will require uh, more distance, burn more diesel. And along that line too, I gotta figure out which vehicle would make the most sense here. So as always this time of year, I am playing a little game of beat the rain. It's supposed to start raining this afternoon. To me, logically, just coming in with a tractor one scoop at a time and tramming it up there, dumping, coming back, would be the easiest. Be the easiest as far as labor goes and be the easiest as far as logistics go. The other option would be to come down and bring the tractor and dump it into the back of our side-by-side -side here. I honestly don't know the cubic feet of my bucket compared to the cubic feet of what this bed can hold. I think they're about the same. And the fact that the bed's not as wide as my bucket, when I go to dump, then I'm going to have wood chips falling over the sides and we have to clean that up. Diesel versus gasoline, wear and tear on one, wear and tear on the other. All that comes into play. And of course, the ag tread on my tractor is, is harder on the ground. But I got to use the tractor anyway to scoop. So I think what we'll do first is we'll start with the tractor and see how that goes. And I want you guys to come along with me. So before I go any further, I want to give a shout out to a new friend that I met. And this young man's name is Garrett. And Garrett came up to me at the local farmer's market trade show we did. And he recognized me from the channel and he had to tell me a joke. So he pushed through the crowds and he got to tell me this joke. And I promised Garrett that I'd not only share this picture, but I would share his joke. And Garrett was excited to tell me this joke. And the joke is, what do you call an alligator with GPS? You refer to him as a navigator. So <laughs> I really appreciate Garrett coming up to me and his dad saying hi. Love running into people that have watched the channel out in public. So, all right, let's get back to some wood chips.
All right, that's really not too bad. It didn't tear up too much. A little bit of uh, mud there and that little drainage ditch to cross, but I can repair that pretty easily. That road, getting that road draining really helped. Even though it's a really steep angle, it really helps keep that dry. So um, got my first drump there, and I think we're going to continue doing this. I just need to do this about 40 more times. So I'll get that done, and I want to show you all what we're planning to do here and how the chips are going to be the best utilized by the chickens. All right, so that's five bucket loads so far here on this side of the chicken church. And uh, it's taken about um, it's taken about a third of the pile, so not as much as I thought. So I'm going to do five here, and you can see how muddy it is right around where the, the chickens like to hang out. So we're going to try to get wood chips over there more. But I think what I'm going to do, look, <laughs> they've been roosting up here in the open window of course pooping all down the back of the church chickens but what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this fence out Just toss it to the side there and i'm going to bring a load of chips in here i don't know if i'll do well i'll try to do i'll see if i can do five if i've got five that I can get in here. I got to get around. Uh, better move my water hose so I don't run over it. And then I got. <laughs> I made this swing for the boys years ago. And I got to say, we all still enjoy it. It's pretty neat. But I got to get it out of the way so I don't get it caught in my tractor. All right, so in our last episode of Beat the Rain, we uh, put all of this here. Again, you guys know because you just saw the last clip. But it's been several days and several doses of rain. And we're going to... Um, I need to get these chips spread out. Right here is the worst collection of mud. And I use that term loosely. Obviously, it's more chicken manure than it is anything. Because this is where the chickens really hang out. We've got the food, the water, obviously the pop door. A lot of splashy mud you can see on everything where they jump up and jump down. But before I do that, I want to put some more crossbars here. You can see these are holding up pretty good. They're actually busting at the seams because the amount of manure and wood chip compost that's going on there is getting extreme. So we're going to add a couple more, be able to spread some more wood chips out because I want to slow this down. You can see over here to your all's left where that pile of wood chips just in two days has moved down... I don't know, three, four feet. They've gotten in there and scratched it out. Here they've done the same thing. They're starting to move that down. And it's causing, uh, it's causing the wood chips to go through the process we want. But we want to just slow those down. A, because we want them to break down and not just be a pile of wood chips down here at the bottom. But to help absorb more of this manure. This place is starting to get, this time of year, since we're just getting into spring, this place has a little bit of an odor to it. So we want to fix that as well and those wood chips are going to do that. But you notice as they stand on these piles, of course, they're dropping more manure, it's getting covered, they're just kind of cycling that, and that's what we want. We want that cycling process of carbon and all the ammonia and nitrogen in the manure, in, in the manure to, to blend together. So we're going to start here with a visit to the slab pile. Pile, goodness. And uh, 
Let's see what we have here. Got a couple here I think would work well. So here's a poplar. Here's a pine. Oh, that's a yeah, we're not gonna fool with that one. Good. Fall over the hill here. Oh, those are way too big. Don't want these to be unwieldy. All right, let's do this. Let's just fire up the mill and cut what we want. So now we have plenty of material to make our little coffer dams, wood chip coffer dams. Some of these boards are eight inches wide, some of them are six inches wide. That'll suffice. I'm going to stop, I'm going to take this up to the <laughs> chicken church without clothesline and stuff, because these are 12 feet long. I'm going to go stop and get a section of half inch conduit, some of my scrap from the uh, demolition of the old greenhouse hoop house and we'll be use, using those to drive in to hold those in place. Well, a little bit of an impasse. <laughs> We're sliding. Watch out. All right, so I think I'm going to try to do one row all the way across. Try to be a, a, a main coffer dam for everything that comes over here and then we'll do two shorter ones maybe even stagger them but we'll see what this layout looks like first i gotta figure out where i put my hammer story of my life oh it's in my hand <clears throat> story of my life if i had a hammer So excited they laid an egg today. It's like they've never done it before. I 
think we found some stone. We're gonna try a little V form here, maybe. See what that looks like laid out. Since these are on an angle, oh, I got the wrong bit. Then I want to fasten them to the conduit with some conduit clamps. And I don't think I need to do that with the ones that are directly horizontal, because they're not going to slide one way or the other. But these could be moved down as the chickens monkey around on them. Monkey chickens that we have. All right, so <laughs> squishy. That's got us in wood chips in all of our high traffic areas. So as I've done this over the last, what, year and a half, two years, it's something that just kind of playing with. It's this balance of you want wood chips up at the top, so as they work their way down, they have time to break down. But you also don't want to have a bunch of exposed soil. So here where it's the wettest, Here's where all the runoff is, the, the strongest of the nitrogen. I'm putting a heavy layer of carbon here, but I may have to, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just, I keep going back and forth. This time of year with the heavy rains, you get a lot of runoff, but here in a couple months where things start growing up, then, um, and the chickens move this wood chips down, not gonna be as big a deal. What I don't want is to be down there at the compost pile, pulling out fresh chips because we put them down there in the first place. So it's a give and take. But I purposely left a huge pile here, obviously, because that's way more than we need, and I left a decent pile over here because I want them to do the moving. I want them to do the scraping. And of course, here in the Appalachian hardwood forest, anytime you have wood chips and ground contact, all you have to do is come up and turn over a, a log or anything, and you'll find 
worms, you'll find cockroaches, you'll find pill bugs, you'll find all these different types of little creepy crawlies. And that just, so this is going to draw them in. And of course the chickens are going to dig them out and, and just really have a field day with all the protein and calcium they get from all those critters. So I purposely didn't put wood up against our new boards that we put in. I want them to take care of that, them to pack that in. Right now they're just enjoying the sawdust and all the little flecks. <laughs> I don't know why they like sawdust, but they enjoy the little flecks there. So I'm just going to let them have their field day at that and just see how they move all this down. And we'll do updates, of course, as we get into, uh, into the spring months. But I do, I do want to show you real quick down here at the bottom where all this accumulates. So here's our winter's accumulation of leaves and what little wood chips we had. <laughs> That's why the poultry netting fence gets drugged down like that because it just piles up so fast. And of course, a little bit of erosion or runoff is part of that too. But you can just see that's just such a thick mat of leaves and soil. I mean, it, there's tons of earthworms in that. And if I'd stick my fork in it, you just see all this, all this goodness. It's soaking wet right now. Yeah, I mean, that completely full of earthworms when I turn that over. The chickens are going to be digging that, literally. So an issue that I've had, and this comes back as an indictment against the farmer, not an indictment against the system. Don't fight the system, man. The ground's so soft I can't even get the post to stay up in it. But if you look down here of the bench, you see this green sludge. And green sludge, we don't really want. But what that is, is a mistake of me not having a good wood chip base in the fall. I thought the leaves were going to suffice throughout the winter. And they didn't. They went through those leaves within a month. So I should have put a lot of wood chips down in the fall and then come back and recharged this spring. But I, uh, I got lazy. But I think that would help reduce that sludge because this is just a lot of runoff of chicken manure. And fortunately I've got, let me turn the camera here. Fortunately, you can't really tell, but I've got a little coffer dam right here at these elderberry bushes. So instead of it just going over the hill and down into the creek, it actually spreads out real far right here. And then the coffer dam makes any of the solids settle. And I've yet to see a little stream go down. I've yet to see it raise up enough that it washes over. So it really absorbs in there. If I go down there, I'd sink up to my ankles because it's just really, really soft right now. But I think with wood chips, it'd slow a lot of that down or at least uh, slow down a lot of the sludgy high nitrogen elements of that.